I had a little bit of a life crisis when I turned 20. Two years ago, I had finally reached the age of freedom. 18. I could travel by myself, I had a license, I could hold down a job, I could finally go out into the world and do cool and interesting things. But I wasn't. So I decided to make a list of things I always wanted to do as a kid, and now I could. And at the top of the list was traveling to a foreign country by myself, particularly Japan. I had studied Japanese in high school, so I knew a little bit of the language. So I could say things like, this one, and uh, lot, lots of other words. Unlike me, everyone else in the class had gotten to the language through anime. While on the other hand, I was interested in the language, which caused me to get into anime because that's what they were watching. I was the one guy who was like, ooh, this writing looks funny. I think I'll take Chinese. If if we had that, but, it, but we don't, so I guess I'm going to take Japanese instead. The anime nerds came in knowing a lot of words. I know they didn't learn in class, like senpai, kisama, bakemono, oni, uso, kawaii desu, and some other words I can't figure out what they mean. Every time I try and search them on Google, I keep getting stopped by the impenetrable Google parental block firewall, which I can't get past because I'm not a parent yet, obviously. When I decided to travel to Japan, the first step was to scrape together a bit of money for my part-time job. I don't know why they're always saying that traveling is a young person's hobby. Traveling is expensive, like really, really expensive, and not many people can be out of work for that long. The second step was for Japan to have a large-scale nuclear disaster happen at the Fukushima power plant, turning Japan into a nuclear hellscape, and dropping airline prices so that way you could pick up the tickets for a song. Look, hey, I'm not saying that the Fukushima nuclear meltdown was a good thing because it saved me money on an airline ticket, what I am saying is that I, I don't think people appreciate the uh, uh, be benefits of disasters, and people always go, oh no, thousands of people lost their homes and the environment was ruined. But, but I choose instead to look at the upside. So, I finally got to travel to Japan by myself. When you go to Japan, you'll probably fly into Narita Airport, which is in the town of Narita, close to Tokyo, but you still have a ways to travel to get into the city. So I had to take a train to Tokyo. Instead of riding the high-speed rail, I saved some money by taking the slower commuter rail in. As I boarded the train, it was a very surreal experience. Hearing everyone talking in a language you can't understand, seeing billboards you can't read. I mean, I had taken two years of Japanese, so of course, of course I could read them. Obs, like this one. Ah, uh, that that right there. That means store. There you go, that's this reading, folks. It was very weird being on the train because I really did feel like an alien. A big part of it was that everyone was in uniform. Across from me were two middle-aged businessmen in suits holding small fans. There were some high school students, some shift workers in white shirts. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was wearing white and black, and only white and black. And I really stuck out with what I was wearing. So people would often come up to me and try and talk with me, and if I said I was an American, they would want to practice their English on me. When I wanted to start small talk with them, I would sometimes ask, Doko e kimashita Which I think translates to, where are you from? Then they would ask me the same question, and I would say, San Diego. And they would look confused, and I'd say, California? South, South, Southern California? And they'd say, oh, I know, Disneyland! And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I live at Disneyland. Buying things in Japan is really simple. All you gotta do is point to something you want and then look sad. And then point to it again and look sad again. And you get the thing you want. Getting around is really easy too. All you have to do is walk back and forth between two platforms looking at signs and looking sad and someone will help you. The trip was two and a half weeks. I spent about four days in Tokyo and two weeks with a rail pass traveling around. The rail pass was great because you can just show the pass and they let you on pretty much any train you want. I stayed at backpackers hostels, which were like 15 to 30 bucks a night. It was off season, so the rooms were practically deserted. There was this one I stayed at where it was just me and this one Japanese girl, and she gave me some fish crackers and I gave her some lifesavers. So we were friends, because that that's how friendship works, I think. She then asked me, Anata no kanojo wa imasu ka? And I was a little confused because one, I thought it was rude in Japanese to call a stranger anata, but what do I know? Also, two, translated literally it means, like, do you have girl, or is there a girl that is yours? 
Also, Kanojo could mean girlfriend. Is she asking if I have girlfriend? I thought about it for like 10 to 20 seconds. So she repeated herself. And then 10 seconds later, I even had her repeat it again because I thought I misheard her. Nope, she said what she said. So I said no, because no matter what she said, the answer was still no. I also said, Go men na sai, boku no nihongo ga josu cha arimasen, which I thought meant, I am, I'm sorry, my Japanese is not very good. Although I think there must have been some kind of miscommunication or something, because, well, that's what I thought I said, what she heard was, my Japanese is really good. I'm the only person here who speaks English and Japanese, so please call me over to translate the same question to new people. I'm totally not going to be bothered by this and definitely don't have better things to do. Eventually what I discovered was that earlier a woman had come to the door asking for someone. So the Japanese girl was asking people, do you have girl? Which meant, there's a girl asking for someone, is she yours? I made friends as I went, hung around with them and went sightseeing. I piled around with a British guy for a while who I ran into three times on my trip in three different cities. He kept asking our Japanese girl who had volunteered to show us around awkward questions like whether America or Britain was better. Then there was another time I went drinking with these three Australians on the banks of the Kamo River in Kyoto. And then there was that one time me and two other guys were pulling some people out of a ravine they had gotten stuck in while hiking. I even got to climb Mount Fuji, which was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I took the bus from the town of Kawaguchiko to Station 5, which is where most people start their hike. And my original plan was to hike a little bit up the mountain and come right back down before lunch. I didn't bring any food with me or jacket. However, I met up with two other guys who were going to climb. So I said, oh, you guys are climbing Mount Fuji. That's so cool. I'll go with you guys part of the way up for just like an hour or two and we'll split up. I'm not going to climb the whole thing. That would just be ridiculous. Yeah, that would be ridiculous, Ben. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it, Ben? Well, in Tokyo and Kawaguchiko, it was about 80 to 90 degrees. On Fuji, it was below freezing. And I was in shorts. When I got back, I was starving and cold, and someone gave me all their meal pouches they weren't eating. Those meal pouches were amazing. Ever since then, when I got back, I have a lot of memories from that time. And a lot of stories that I tell, even now, start with that one time I went to Japan. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. So, these are my afterthoughts on the Japan video. First off, I didn't think about this until I was done, but in the video when I said I would go up to people and ask them, where are you from? I have to clarify, I'd ask them that at hostels, resorts, so I thought it was a little confusing, like, why would you ask commuters where they're from? They're obviously from that area if they work there. So that's why I have to clarify, I only asked them when I knew they were travelers as well. Also with the girl in the hostel story, I think that part of the unspoken confusion is that in English when you ask someone, do you have a girlfriend, it's kind of a leading question because it's often asked before asking someone out or hooking up. While that may not be the case in Japan, it seems like it isn't. So about the Fukushima nuclear power plant, uh, the disaster had happened a few months before I went, and people were, like, genuinely worried about me being in Tokyo, saying to me, Oh, Ben, are you going to be okay there? And I said, one, I'm only going to be there, like, two-ish weeks, and two, the radiation levels are undetectable about 80 miles or so from the facility, and also, Tokyo is well out of that range, and three, people in Tokyo have been in that radiation supposedly for months, and they're fine. But yeah, that was big news when I went over, and everyone in the U.S. was talking about it. Although, from what I heard on the news, I was kind of expecting, you know, more? I went expecting a nuclear hellscape, and that's not what I got. And everyone was going like, oh no, it's going to be terrible there. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. You know, some people are pessimists. They think that the world's going to shits, and we're going to wipe ourselves out in this big nuclear holocaust. And some people are optimists, you know, like they think they're going to be going towards this big utopia, and everyone's going to be lovey-dovey and blah blah blah, and it's going to be great. I'm a optimistic pessimist. I think the world's going to shit, and it's going to be awesome! As long as we're not going to one of those boring apocalypses, you know, the ones where it's like we have to go back to living on farms, and loving each other, and blah blah blah. 
I hope we're going to one of the cool apocalypses where I get to run around with double katanas, black trench coats, cybernetic implants, fighting an evil corporate syndicate, running up walls and people saying like, when will the fighting end? Can't we just live in peace? Blah! While well, I'm stabbing them in his chest. It's gotta be awesome. Then I went there. You guys had this whole nuclear meltdown. I'd seen anime before, so my expectations were through the roof. But then I went there, and you want to know what? I didn't get chased down by one single hellish mutant abomination. Not one! Super disappoint, 010, would not apocalypse again. You can do better than that, Japan. By the way, side note, uh, I have a Twitter for this channel. I hardly ever use it. I pretty much just post videos from this channel. But if you want to tweet something to me or keep up to date or something, I'd love to talk with you guys there. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.